all hosted by John Ramsey. This is Wave 3 Listens Live. And happy Valentine's Day to you and welcome to Wave 3 Listens Live. Today, the show is dedicated to ensuring that you do have a happy Valentine's Day. Let me tell you who we have on the show today. Uh, there we go. Body Allure is on with us, and that is Dr. Michael Samuel is on the show today. We're going to talk about how you can look good for your honey on this Valentine's Day. And I've been looking forward to this segment for, well, since last week, Dr. Eli Karam, who is a licensed marriage and family therapist. He is back in the house, and we've been talking about how to fight fair and make no... There, there's no question about it. You can have the Russell Stover's heart-shaped <laughs> box of candy. You can have the flowers, the dinner reservations. But if you argue with your spouse, you will ruin Valentine's Day. All right, John. So today is going to be uh, completely applicable. If, if you get out of sync tonight, we're going to give you a concrete skill. So well, last week we talked about taking the time out, which is part of Fighting Fair. Today we're going to talk about a specific technique called the speaker-listener technique, or sometimes referred to as active listening. So that gives a uh, way for couples that are out of sync, that are starting to get heated into an argument to kind of reset set and be able to connect with their partner. So I have with us here today uh, two of my students from the University of Louisville Kent School of Social Work and they're also student members of the Kentucky Association of Marriage and Family Therapy, Beck and Matt, and they're going to kind of talk to you about a common couple fight that you might see in your own home. Well, you know, if you're talking about couples fighting, I guarantee you I've seen it. So, <laughs> so here we go. So we're going to do a little role playing here. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, a little refresher course about last week. It's a lot about listening and positioning your argument correctly. Right, right. Doctor? But most people kind of start out like this. So uh, here we go. All right. You're always on your phone. If I'm not, I'm going to miss something. And I don't know why you keep picking at me every time I'm on. What are you going to miss? It's, uh, with marketing, if you're not on it, then you're going to miss something. I'm with my clients right now. I'm working. Yeah, but working. you're at home now. I don't have a nine to five. And well, you should. You, but that's not how my market works, and you know that. Every time you're you bring this up. You're always on your phone. You're always ignoring me. You're never paying attention to me. You're Matt, never I home. have to, I, I'm okay, here stop. right now. All right. What did we see there, John? Well, we saw... Uh, Typical argument, Becca and, and, and Matt kind of getting in, talking over each other, and when, when couples really are trying to stand their ground, argue their point, it defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do. So what we don't want to do is speak in uh, kind of you language. You don't want to say, you always do this, you never. That automatically makes your partner defensive. You also do not want to kind of hit below the belt or exploit any type of vulnerabilities in the relationship from the past that you know that will upset your partner, and you really can't think about solving the problem because most couples get into issues that we call perpetual issues that can't be solved. In fact, you know, almost 69% of marital and long-term relationship problems aren't solvable, believe it or not. They take acceptance and tolerance. So this skill is really about validation. So what we're going to see here now in the speaker-listener technique is a different way to do it. And what will happen is one person is the speaker and one person is the listener. When you are in the speaker role, you are uh, speaking in I statements, not you. You do this, you do that. I. And generally it's better I feel a certain way when you do this. So you're going to speak in 30 to 60 second kind of clips, John, because if we go longer than that, what happens is our partner completely tunes out. They're working on a rebuttal in their head. It They're becomes a focused. lecture. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and so you can't speak longer than that. And uh, the job of the listener is to reflect back what's going on. They're not there to put their two cents in. They will get a chance later on. When you're in the listener role, you are trying to paraphrase back, not simply a parrot, but the most important part of what you heard your partner say. Uh, and then you're going to switch roles. And it starts kind of prescribed, and it seems a little unnatural at first, but you're going to watch these guys, and uh, we're going to get the point across. So let's see that conversation after the timeout. Start it over, and then we'll talk about it. Okay. Becca, I feel like... I feel kind of lonely when you spend all the time on the phone and at work and you're just not home as much as I'd like you to be and, and I think that's become something hard for me because of you, your job and it's, you know, I know it's what gives us our, helps us with our income and keeps us stable but it's, I just miss you when, when you're gone so much and it's, it's been hard. It, I've been kind of feeling kind of down about it lately and I just, I don't know what to do about it. Okay, um, I just want to make sure that I heard you right. So, you're you feel lonely when I'm even when I'm there. If I'm on the phone, it's it, it hurts your feelings that I'm not paying attention to you, but instead I'm paying attention to to the phone. Is that right? 
Yeah, I think it's just I feel like you you it, it feels like you're putting the, your job and phone over me and our relationship and that just that hurts. So you feel like I'm putting my job ahead of you when I'm on my phone so much. Yeah, that's the message I get from it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, when when I'm on my phone, I feel like I'm I'm really doing my best at my job and I I want to be able to to, to supplement our income and when you keep picking at me to, to get off my phone and get off my phone I feel like you don't you don't want me to to work as much and it's almost like you don't think that my job is important I think what I'm hearing you say is that, that you really you really want to do a good job at work and you want us to have money and be able to be stable and, and be able to you know to have the life we want but it seems like my Picking at you or nagging is, 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 you're not happy with it. Okay, stop. All right. So what you saw there, again, these are two pros that uh, work with uh, people out there just like you, the viewer, and, but, and they've been working hard. So that was a great example, but it's, and let's talk about what they did. They spoke uh, in I statements uh, for themselves, and the, 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 the listener was listening, not trying to argue their point, and didn't just parrot back. They, they enca encapsulated the most important parts of what their partner was saying, so their partner felt heard. And when that happens, John, you can tell because the other partner's like, yeah, I got it. You can see by their verbals and their nonverbals. A head nod, they were making eye contact, which is also very important in this skill. If you're not looking down, you're distracted, you have the TV on, you cannot do this speaker-listener technique. So they were focused on each other. and. Uh, what was also very natural is they went back and forth. After Matt said his piece and Becca validated back what was going on for Matt, and Matt acknowledged it, then Becca had the floor. So it, it was a really nice way to do it. I think there's a huge advantage, though, to having a licensed marriage and family therapist, obviously to referee and, and to really help people learn how to argue fairly. With that being said, let's talk about your website yep. and also how they can find a therapist that may be able to help out their relationships. There we go. It, it, exactly. There it is, KMFT dot org and www.therapistlocator.net so uh, any licensed marriage and family therapist and then you're going to see an LMFT after their name and you will be able to find them on these websites can walk you through these basic fundamental building blocks communication skills of the speaker listener and taking a time out like we said last week so you can learn to do it and I always tell people it seems prescribed at first but if you do it it, it can become natural like our, our two actors here today uh, who do it every day with their own clients all right dr. Eli Karam you're fantastic have a great thank Valentine's you for the helpful day. hints we're gonna make sure that everyone has a great Valentine's Day Matt and Beck I want to thank you. you did an excellent job very well done uh, I thought they were really married. They were great. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Licensed and marriage therapist. You saw it. Again, I want to remind you. Uh, uh, what? Uh, therapist locator. I wanted to get that right. Therapistlocator.com. Is that right, doctor? Dot net. Yeah. Dot net. Dot net. I apologize. All right. Check them out. All right. You know now how not to argue with your partner. It's Valentine's Day. We want to make sure you look good for your honey and feel confident about yourself. Body Allure is in the house. We're going to talk to Dr. Michael Samuel coming up next on Way 3 Listens.